Welcome! Today is a special day. It's my first time in front of the camera and we will be interviewing this guy. Hey Lego Maniac, thank you for having me here on your channel. I'm really happy to be here because I really enjoy your videos. You make such high quality content that I can only be envious. And I've really been looking forward to this collaboration. I'm really looking forward to answering all of your questions. So thank you for having me. I am so happy to be here. That's right, we're doing an interview with Jacob from the Brick Bakery. I'm super excited for this. Jacob has a phenomenal channel with high quality creative content where he does uh, Lego set reviews from 80s and 90s, mocks, uh, interviews like this one, mail time videos, city updates, and he has a weekly live stream on Fridays, which you should all join. And he does all of this with such an immense energy, which is rarely seen anywhere else. So sit back, enjoy this. Brick Bakery interview. So my first question is about memory. Uh, many of us uh, experienced Lego for the first time in our, in our childhood growing up with Lego and others might encounter it for the first time as an adult, possibly getting Lego for, uh, for their kids or, or similar. And my question for uh, you Jacob is, uh, what is your absolute earliest memory? When did you experience Lego for the first time? I think my earliest Lego memory probably revolves around two Lego sets. It's a small stock car and a small Red Cross ambulance doctor vehicle. Uh, I got both of those, I think, at a birthday very very long ago way back in the late 1980s and i remember unwrapping one of them and then asking my mother what is this because i didn't know what lego was and she said it's lego and i had no idea what it was what the purpose was uh, for it and and the fact that you could actually build it was something that was completely foreign to me so 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 that is my my earliest memory unwrapping a box of lego and not knowing what it was so uh, yeah that has led to so much more since then <laughs> those are some great sets and a nice first memory on your channel you post a lot of amazing mocks as well uh, with a wide variety of themes, both in landscapes, cars, houses, both fantasy and modern, uh, while accompanying them with such nice stories and music, sort of like bedtime stories before, before, yeah, before bed. And my question is, which Lego piece is your favorite to use in your mocks? I actually have two go-to pieces. One is the 1x2 brick and the other is the 1x2 plate. The 1x2 plate is great and one I use often because it's good at creating details, it's good at creating sort of a dynamic look. You can, you can do a lot with surfaces if you use something that is that small. And the 1x2 brick is something I use very, very often because I think it's also a question of availability on pickup pick a brick walls it's often one by two bricks that are plentiful and i'll just get a lot of those and i have those in many different colors and i think that's why it's one of my go-to bricks and and the one by two sort of base also allows for a lot of flexibility in how you create your buildings and of course the masonry bricks which is some of my favorite bricks out there is mostly in one by two as well there is one by four bricks in in masonry uh, masonry profiling but but it is mostly one by twos that has been available so one by two bricks and one by two plates are definitely some of my favorite pieces to use couldn't agree more the one by two uh, plate and bricks are essential building blocks of almost any mocks i as many others probably rely heavily on the one by two plate um, now, YouTube channels are a lot of work between uh, filming, editing, interacting with community, researching. How do you even find times for yourself? How do you balance your personal life, Lego and YouTube? 
That's actually a very, very good question. I think it's a question that uh, many collectors, not just Lego collectors or YouTube people have to ask themselves. How do you, how do you sort of balance your hobby with your personal life and, and all that? And, and the thing is when you do uh, Lego YouTube, there's actually two hobbies. There's one that's the Lego, and then there's the other, which is the, the, the film and the video making. So, so how do I balance that? Well, I balance it by having set days uh, set time slots where I record my videos I do uh, my live streams on set days on on set uh, uh, time slots so I always know when I've got to do something for the channel and I know uh, how long I can do it for and so on and so forth so that's pretty easy to balance in that regard of course it does take time but it is a hobby so hobbies take time and that's just how it is uh, the lego the building is something i sort of try to sort of uh, fit in whenever i got the i've got the time you know uh, lego is is a thing where you can sort of go to uh, and go from it again you can you can do it just for 10 minutes you can build something for just 10 minutes you can sit about it for an hour or you can two hours three hours or just you know whenever you just oh i have i have five minutes now i have 10 minutes now i can come back to it of course there is something about um developing ideas and such that goes on throughout the day you know when you've started something you know you um you you keep thinking about it it just keeps going in your mind you keep thinking about solutions and ideas and and when you come back you know you're ready to build something so so just using 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there maybe in half an hour once in a while you know you can get a lot of, lot of things done because you think about it it's, it's in there just start something go away come back so that's that's uh, that's how i do it I, I i try to just fit in small sessions of building and do my videos on set days and then it seems to balance pretty well for me actually Yes, having a firm schedule like that and the discipline to follow it does sound like a good way of making sure that you get a little bit of time for yourself during the week and, uh, and try not to burn out as uh, can happen with many YouTubers. Now on your channel and within the community you display a, a really great enthusiasm and excitement. What do you think powers that enthusiasm and energy to display that in your videos? I'm not sure I've been asked that before actually and I don't know where the answer come from specifically but if you watch some of my older videos you'll see that there's not as much energy in that as there is in the later ones and you'll also see if you watch some that's not the first ones but something some of them that's you know maybe a year old you'll see me shouting a lot and uh, and and that that whole thing has two sides to it. First of all, I was trying to counteract the sort of subdued, almost Valium like nothing happening from the first videos, and and I was also trying to uh, to compensate for the fact that the iPhone microphone isn't very good at picking up sound, so you had to really yell at it to get the sound out. So that whole you know energy that lies in that i i've kept even though i've i've changed my equipment i've stopped yelling you i i rewatched an old review of mine of of um, of the enchanted island and an islander set from uh, from the pirates lineup and 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 my gosh i'm yelling i'm yelling so much i'm just yelling 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 i don't know how i did that but i did that um and it's something i've changed but but ke keeping the energy was important and your question is of course where does it come from i i don't know particularly i think i think it's the interaction with people i think it's um it's talking to people it's getting feedback and all that that really sort of energizes me to do more do better do do the things i i i like to do and i think that's probably where the energy comes from uh, when the in the long and short of it my passion for making videos my passion for presenting stuff really really fuels my energy so that's that's um, that's where i think the energy comes from um long answer i'm sorry but um, that's uh, that's what it is yes i agree support from the community can definitely be a good power and encouragement to continue performing at one's best now, you're a man of many interviews, Jacob, and we must almost know everything about you already. Uh, so my question is, which question have you not been asked that you really want to answer? 
That's a good question. And one thing I don't think I've ever been asked about is what is the goal of Brick Bakery? And the fact is that there isn't really any. When I started out way back a couple of years ago, I said to myself, uh, make 10 videos, see if you like it, uh, and then make 10 more. And after that, it's just something I do. I think the goal for me is just to have fun, uh, getting better at making videos, getting better at building Lego. But besides that, I don't think there is too much of a goal. I think uh, most YouTubers and most Lego YouTubers at some point have, of course, thought about, can I maybe get to a point where I can live of this? Can I actually turn this hobby into my job? And I think I thought that I thought about that for some time, but fairly quickly I realized that that would take a lot more work than I actually got the time for. So not not with this project. No, I don't think it'll be that. And and, and hence that's not the goal. Um, then of course there is uh, there is the other goal that might uh, be something Lego YouTubers, particularly Lego YouTubers, uh, would think about, which is becoming an approved Lego fan media. Uh, which is an approval where you can uh, where you can end up getting, for instance, Lego sets from the uh, Lego company for your reviews. So you're actually sort of on a list to receive stuff for reviews, and you also get invited to different press events and all kinds of stuff. And that's of course something you could consider uh, as a goal when you are a Lego YouTube channel when you're trying to do Lego media. I have thought about that, and um, I, I, I'm not saying that it, that that's not something I'd want, but I don't see it as an attainable immediate goal. Maybe someday out in the future, if something crazy happens with my channel or my website or something like that, maybe then. But other than that, I don't think that's a viable goal. We'll see. Maybe someday, but but for now. The, um, the, the goal for my channel is to, to have fun, learn more about video making, get better at making videos, and get better at building LEGO. Very interesting to hear about your uh, goals with the, your channel, Jacob. Becoming a uh, recognized LEGO fan media is probably a very big dream for many of us, but it's certainly important to uh, set smaller, more attainable goals on the way there. And uh, that seems to be all we have time for today. Thank you so much for uh, being interviewed, Jacob. And this has been a uh, delight. Thanks a lot for having me here on your channel, Lego Lomaniac. It has been a lot of fun to answer your questions. Those questions were very, very creative. Just as creative as your channel. I really enjoy your channel. You do great work. Your mocks are beautiful and I'm very, very thankful to have received one of them at one point. It's just great, the stuff you do. And thank you for being such a great part of the LEGO community. It has been very important for me to meet you uh, and uh, getting all your support and, and sharing this whole experience of being a LEGO YouTuber has been very, very important to me. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me here and thank you for all the great work that you do. And I'm really looking forward to your next 24 hour live stream. Yes, many have asked if I'm going to do a, a, a live stream building the new UCS Star Destroyer. But I say they're not thinking big enough. And uh, I have some plans in the works for something really awesome for the next one. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you happen to want to know more about me, you can check out Jacob's interview with me right up here. And I'll see you in the next puzzle video. Although you won't see me. So sit back and enjoy this Brick Bakery interview. Time lapse.